Using a PowerShell job is as easy as just using the start job command. So this creates a job in the background. So here on line 13, we're going to run this job. And you can see that we've got a job based on that output down below. And you can see that its state is running uh, and it does have more data. So using the get job commandlet, we can actually retrieve that information that is output by the start job commandlet. And we can see that now its state is completed. So to receive it, we simply pipe get job to receive job. And this will receive all jobs that you currently have that are ready to be received. And you can see that we received our hello world output. If you look above the script block inside of start job is just a write host for hello world. And so that's why it was able to receive that. The next thing we want to do is to remove that job now that we're done with it. So I'm going to pipe get job to remove job. So one of the nice things about jobs is you don't have to just start one at a time. You can start a whole lot of them. So for instance here, if I wanted to start 10 of them, I've got one and then the dot dot operator 10. So this will pipe one through 10 down the pipeline to the for each object. And for each of those, I'm starting a job with the name of that number and then the script block, hello world from, and then the number pass. And so you can see that I'm using the argument list parameter and specifying the piped object. And so running these jobs, you can see that we've got job names one through 10, all well, were running where they started. And if we use the get job commandlet, we can see that they are now listed as complete. And so if we want to receive just five of those, it's an object on the pipeline. So there's a lot of things we can do. And so here I'm piping it to the select object commandlet, selecting just the first five and then receiving them with receive job. And so you can see that I've got five instances of hello world from one to five. And then we can, of course, set that output to a variable. So I'm going to take the output from receive job and set it on the received jobs variable. And then looking at that variable, so remember we already received one through five, so there's six through 10. So then of course we want, we would want to remove jobs at line 40. It's the same thing from before, get job pipe to remove job. Um, but one thing I like to do in case we have jobs that we want to leave running, so the ones that aren't completed, I'm piping get job to where object and specifying only jobs where the state is completed and then removing those. But of course, I mean, you can see that since they were all completed, running get job shows nothing. So I've got an example here. This is kind of real world. I've got a CSV file of the top 500 websites by traffic. And so you can see here, I got a link from where I got this CSV file. And so if I assign this to the top 500 websites variable, one of these objects looks like this. So we can see rank one is Facebook. And this is just based on linking root domain. It's not actually traffic like I mentioned before. So what I want to do here is I want to see if each of these URLs allows us to ping it. So here, line 54, I'm piping that top 500 websites object to, for each object, I'm just selecting the first 25. We don't need to look at all 500, that might take a while. And then for each of those, I'm just seeing if I can ping it. So I'm using the test connection commandlet in PowerShell. And I'm doing it just once and I'm doing it quietly. So it's gonna return to true or false. And so if we run this line, you can see we've got a bunch of trues and then it kind of stops because the false, it takes a few seconds to actually time out. And so it's going to get through all 25, but it's, you can see that, you know, if, if I want to come down here and do something at the prompt while that was running, I cannot. but that's where jobs come in. So here I've got the same thing as before. So I'm piping in the top 500 websites and selecting the first 25 to a for each again, but this time in the for each object, instead of just a text connection, I'm actually starting a job. So line 59, we've got the start job and then 60 is the script block. So it's the same thing from before, but you can see I'm using the args variable because on 61, I'm specifying the argument list has that URL. And so if we run this, these test connections inside of jobs, you see we've got all of our jobs. So it, it drops us right back to the console. So we can still do things and, and they still work. Even though if we run get job, we can still see that we've got our jobs. And actually, so you could look at the state column there, they're all showing as completed. So in reality, all those jobs took as long as one of them would take to receive that false back. So what we can do here on line 68, we can pipe get job to where object commandment, looking for jobs that have, uh, that has more data property equal to true. So when they have and has more data equal to true, uh, that means they're gonna return data and we can receive that data with receive job again. So I'm going to pipe all these to receive job line 68. And there you can see that we've got our true, 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 false, false, true. 
but we don't know which websites are which. Um, so here, let's remove those and let's actually write that to return an object. So receive job can receive any type of object that is output from that script block inside of start job. So here I'm returning a custom object. So this is the same top 500 websites piped to for each start job. Same thing for before, but instead inside of the script block, I'm returning a PS custom object line 76 uh, with two properties. So line 77, the URL. So we'll know which website it is. And then line 78, this is whether or not it was able to ping it. So this will be true or false, just like we saw before. So if we go ahead and run this snippet, and you can see that it drops us right back to the console while these jobs are running. And of course, of course we can, we can still run commands and they, and they, they work while these background jobs are running. If we look at them while they're running here, we can see get job running. So we've got them all running. We've got a couple of them completed. Give that a minute here. And so what I'm going to do when I receive these jobs, I'm building an array here first. So line 87, I'm declaring my array. And then I'm going to receive as many jobs that have more data equal to true. So the jobs that are ready to return data, I'm going to assign that to received jobs. Let's take a look and see if it's all completed yet. Okay, they're all completed already. So I'm going to go ahead and assign the ones that are completed to received jobs. And then we look at the count it should be 25. It is. But if that were less than 25, uh, since I did declare received jobs as an array, line 93, you can see I've got the plus equals operator. And this is where we'd keep adding in more jobs as they came in if we needed to. And then of course we can look at received jobs and we can see that it did return all of our data with the run space ID. So here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pipe it to format table so we can get a little better formatted output here. And there we go. Now we can see which sites have ping enabled and which ones do not. Thanks for watching.